just from a punch. That's not right. him making an excuse. Right. They ask, right. they ask some questions. Then when he say the truth, they'll say he's using excuse. That's not making an excuse. He didn't say someone right. cheated. He didn't say he caught me off guard. He said, no, 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 no. In boxing, people get hit in the ear. Mm -hmm. You're hitting the equilibrium. This is heavyweight, top quality box at the highest level. It's mm -hmm. not an excuse. Mm -hmm. They right. got hit in the ear, which is all fear play to Fury. Because right. Fury is fighting. He ain't got time. Man, he trying to get him out of it like we were right. trying to do him. Right. But it, like these narratives that come across about Deontay, just so unfair. People say, oh, that's another excuse. But hold on. He didn't say no one did nothing wrong. He just said after I got hit with a good shot, my equilibrium was off, was which off. was factual. Right. Yeah, because look, because look, at the, the first knockdown was very like, um, it wasn't like how the other ones was. It was very like, damn, he must have got hit with something because now he looked wobbly. Right. It was right. He, got, he got hit with a good shot and it knocked his equilibrium, which is right. good. But that's not an excuse. Stop trying to attack Deontay. Like, like, cut that shit out. The man just gave y'all heart, guts, glory, passion. Please give him a break for the first month. Right. Let's, let's right. at least this month. Like, back off with that shit. Right. Like, right. we're about to be back in camp in a few months. Y'all can come back attacking us then. Stop doing that, man. But um, his equilibrium was off from Tyson hitting him with a very good shot. They're knocking him down. He got up. And then what do we do when he get up, though? He Then, then Tyson hopped on him once he got up. He right. survived that storm. Right. Came back to the corner. I give him some instruction. He take the instruction. Not one time talking in the corner. Not right. one time acting like he don't know what I'm getting. Yes, right. sir. I got you, bro. All right, then get back out there. No excuses made. He goes back out there the next round and did a beautiful sequence knockdown. That, that knockdown was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And it come from what? It come from a decoy. It come from decorate. You can't just go out there. How many times Deontay missed? A reckless one two at Fury. Tons of times. Mm -hmm. You have to decorate your work. You have to dress Fury up before you mm -hmm. throw mm -hmm. your main punch at him. He's mm -hmm. very crafty. So what do he do? Give him a feint. He give him an intentful jab to the body. Then give him a measure. Then around. that's how you gotta do it. Right. And that's how the knockout came about. Right. The sec the second knock I mean the, the first knockdown. The second knockdown came about is when Deontay is inside and Fury wanna wrestle. Deontay at times doesn't work the free hand. He worked the free hand right there because it's just there. You might as well use it. You in the right, back. right. He worked the free hand, caught Fury on the head. Fury goes down again. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it's all about Deontay just doing these things, like I said before, on a much more consistent basis. That's all it is. I think um, what I learned from that is more drilling. More like I, I just can't wait. I'm set to go. I can't wait to get him back in camp. You know, I want him to rest. When we finish up surgery and everything, but God, looking at that fight on TV, it made me even more proud of him because I. That was Deontay Wilder trainer Malik Scott on Blue Blood revealing why Deontay Wilder was looking like he was on spaghetti legs, gassed out and can barely stand up. And just to make one thing clear before we go any further, for the people that continuously say, y'all making excuses. You guys have to realize analyzing the fight and making excuses are two different things. However, who am I kidding? Like Roger Mayweather said, y'all don't know shit about boxing. Making excuses is Pacquiao claiming he hurt his shoulder, but he was throwing it all freaking night. While analyzing the fight is logically explained how Deontay Wilder ran out of gas in one round, even though he always had great stamina. But let these decafs tell it, that's making excuses. See, is one thing if Deontay Wilder was full of energy the entire fight, then someone said Deontay Wilder gassed out in the second round. That's making excuses. But if Deontay Wilder did look exhausted after the second round, that's called analyzing the facts. However, y'all wouldn't know that because y'all don't know shit about boxing. But perhaps if y'all listen more than y'all talk, y'all can actually end up learning something about boxing. More importantly, Deontay Wilder told Malik Scott that he wasn't gassed out. In fact, he had plenty of energy. However, in the third round, Deontay Wilder got caught on the ear, which completely knocked off his equilibrium. That's why he was off balance the whole night. Similar to when Anthony Joshua fought Andy Ruiz the first time around, where he got hurt in the third round and could never recover. That's exactly what happened to Deontay Wilder. After the second round, his legs pretty much wasn't under him. 
Man, Deontay Wilder looked so off balance the entire fight that you would have thought the wind of Tyson Fury punch alone would have put him down. That's how bad Deontay Wilder was looking. So it's highly impressive that some way somehow Deontay Wilder managed to go eight more rounds in them conditions. It was really Wilder's heart and will that carried him that long. And what makes it more impressive is that Deontay Wilder managed to score two knockdowns in the state he was in, in which one of the knockdowns, Tyson Fury was on the canvas for more than 10 seconds. Better yet, Wilder then came back and won the fifth round. However, by the 11th round, Deontay Wilder could barely stand up and pretty much knocked himself out. So the million dollar question, why did it take Tyson Fury so long to get Deontay Wilder out of there when he was pretty much out on his feet for eight rounds. Now, of course, Tyson Fury respected Deontay Wilder right hand because it put him down, nearly put him out. But even then, Deontay Wilder was so vulnerable for so many different punches that a skillful fighter that's 280 pounds should have been more than able to take advantage of instead of waiting to when Deontay Wilder could barely stand up to take him out. That's why Tyson Fury is going to have problems with other completed fighters, such as Usyk and even Dillian White. Furthermore, this revelation by Deontay Wilder explains why he looked like he was gassed out, off balance, and can barely stand up, which was my major concern about Wilder right after watching the trilogy. So it turned out that the stamina wasn't the issue. But in fact, it was Deontay Wilder getting hurt on the ear right next to where Tyson Fury dented Deontay Wilder's skull in their previous fight, which credit to Tyson Fury, he targets vital points when he punches. And like I said on the Mike Tyson reaction video to the trilogy, I did mention when Deontay Wilder got hit by Tyson Fury, it could have possibly taken his legs away. See, I had thought it was the right hand on the chin that caused the damage, but it turned out to be the overhand right on Deontay's Wilder dented skull which I said previously that the damage Wilder took from the rematch is permanent. I mean, what do you expect when Wilder had a dented skull? People are asking, is Deontay Wilder going to look the same from this point forward? Now, nah, there's no doubt about it. Wilder took a lot of punishment in the trilogy. However, I truly believe Wilder haven't been looking the same since the Fury rematch. That fight took a lot out of him mentally and physically as he took a lot of damage, including a dented skull, which is not even physically possible with 10 ounce heavyweight gloves on. Therefore, the way Deontay Wilder looked in the trilogy, I truly believe he was already damaged good from the rematch. Nevertheless, we shall see how Wilder look in the future. I mean, you have fighters like Pacquiao who get knocked out and then come back like nothing ever happened. But then you have fighters like Roy Jones who never look the same after they got KO'd. With that being stated, this concludes. The reason why Deontay Wilder looked punch drunk is because when he got hit on the ear, he lost his equilibrium in the third round and he never recovered, just like Anthony Joshua against Andy Ruiz. The only difference was the will to win and the heart of Wilder. He was willing to die in the ring in order to win. That's how he managed to win three rounds and score two knockdowns in that condition. Nevertheless, I still believe Deontay Wilder was fatigued and tired because in the corner, he was breathing extremely hard where he looked out of it. One thing for sure though, being out on your feet can speed up the process to getting fatigued. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe below and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Ak TV. Peace and I'm on to the next one.